Imagine a man fascinated by the world of insects, but not just for their biology. This man is Viktor Stepanovich Grebenikov, a self-proclaimed entomologist who took his fascination to a whole new level. Born in Simferopol in the year 1927, Grebenikov's passion for the insect world led him to a lifelong career in entomology. But his curiosity didn't stop with the natural world. His interests also extended to the world of unconventional science, particularly the concept of anti-gravity. Grebenikov's contributions to entomology were significant. He discovered several new species of insects and made substantial contributions to the understanding of insect biology. But his true claim to fame, or infamy, depending on who you ask, was his discovery of what he dubbed cavity structural effect in the wings of certain insects. He claimed that these cavities could generate anti-gravity effects, a concept that was, and still is, far outside the mainstream scientific paradigm. Grebenikov's fascination with the anti-gravity effects of insect wings led him to develop an anti-gravity platform. He claimed this platform could levitate and move at high speeds, all thanks to the resonant effects of the cavities in insect wings. His descriptions of flying on this platform and his claims of its incredible capabilities captured the imagination of many. But his lack of empirical evidence and the inability of others to replicate his results brought skepticism and controversy. Despite the criticisms and controversy, Grebenikov's work has inspired countless debates and discussions on the possibilities of anti-gravity and the power of fringe science. His unconventional approach to science, his bold claims, and his enduring belief in the power of natural structures have made him a polarizing figure in the world of science. This man, Viktor Grebenikov, sparked a controversy that still resonates today. His life and work serve as a reminder of the unpredictable and fascinating journey that the quest for knowledge can often become. Anti-gravity, a concept that has captivated human imagination for centuries. It's an idea that's been a staple of science fiction, from the hoverboards of Back to the Future to the spaceships of Star Trek. But what exactly is anti-gravity? Simply put, it's the hypothetical phenomenon of counteracting gravity, the force that attracts a body towards the center of the Earth or towards any other physical body having mass. Now, let's delve into the history of anti-gravity research. The concept has been around since the late 17th century, when Isaac Newton first formulated his laws of motion and gravitation. Since then, it has been a subject of both mainstream and fringe research. Mainstream researchers, such as those at NASA, have explored the idea of manipulating gravity for propulsion purposes, but their efforts have largely been theoretical. On the fringes, anti-gravity research has been pursued by those willing to challenge conventional scientific wisdom. These researchers, often working outside established institutions, have proposed a variety of methods for achieving anti-gravity, from harnessing exotic forms of matter to exploiting as yet undiscovered laws of physics. In the mid 20th century, the concept of anti-gravity took a turn for the strange. When Russian entomologist Viktor Grebenikov claimed to have discovered a natural form of anti-gravity in the wings of certain beetles. His claims, which we'll delve into in the next scene, have been both fascinating and controversial. Despite the tantalizing possibilities that anti-gravity presents, the scientific community remains largely skeptical. The prevailing view is that gravity, as described by Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, cannot be negated or reversed by any known means. This skepticism is fueled by the lack of empirical evidence supporting anti-gravity, as well as the absence of a theoretical framework that could explain such a phenomenon. The scientific community, however, remain skeptical about the feasibility of anti-gravity. Nevertheless, the quest for understanding and potentially harnessing anti-gravity continues, driven by human curiosity and the desire to push the boundaries of what's possible. Grebenikov's claim to fame lies in his alleged creation of an anti-gravity platform. A renowned entomologist, Viktor Grebenikov ventured into the realm of unconventional science with his extraordinary revelation. His anti-gravity machine, as he described it, was a platform, said to be capable of levitation and high-speed travel. 
all powered by a peculiar mechanism derived from nature itself. The heart of Grebenikov's machine was an array of cavity structures, which he claimed to have discovered on the underbellies of certain insect wings. These structures, according to Grebenikov, were not merely physical features, but were integral to a potent phenomenon he termed cavity resonance. Grebenikov's anti-gravity platform was purportedly built using a series of these cavity structures arranged in a specific pattern. He believed that when these structures were exposed to certain vibrations, they could generate a powerful field of energy capable of counteracting gravity. This, he claimed, was the secret behind his anti-gravity machine. In his descriptions, Grebenikov painted vivid pictures of his machine's capabilities. He claimed it could hover in mid-air, accelerate to high speeds, and even render its operator invisible, all by harnessing the power of cavity resonance. And yet the most fascinating aspect of Grebenikov's anti-gravity platform was perhaps not its alleged capabilities, but its origin. Grebenikov's machine was not the product of advanced technology or complex engineering, but of a simple, humble observation of nature. He believed that nature had already unlocked the secret of anti-gravity in the form of these cavity structures, and humans merely needed to uncover and understand it. However, Grebenikov's claims, though fascinating, were met with skepticism and controversy. His work, while groundbreaking if true, lacked the rigorous scientific evidence and transparency that are cornerstones of scientific discovery. The scientific community, while intrigued by the concept of cavity resonance, found Grebenikov's claims about his anti-gravity platform hard to accept without solid proof. This skepticism forms the backdrop against which Grebenikov's anti-gravity machine is often discussed, a captivating enigma that continues to raise questions about the very nature of gravity and our understanding of it. Grebenikov's claims, though fascinating, have been met with skepticism and controversy. Cavity resonance, a scientific phenomenon, plays a central role in Grebenikov's anti-gravity claims. But what exactly is cavity resonance? At its core, it's a physical phenomenon where a cavity, such as an open box or a hollow sphere, can amplify waves at certain frequencies. This happens when the frequency of the wave matches the natural frequency of the cavity, causing the wave to resonate and increase in amplitude. You might be familiar with this concept from everyday experiences. For instance, when you blow across the top of a bottle and it makes a sound, that's an example of cavity resonance. The air inside the bottle vibrates at a certain frequency, amplifying the sound. Cavity resonance isn't just a fun party trick. It also has practical applications in many areas of modern technology. For example, in telecommunications, cavity resonators are used in devices like cell phones and radios to filter out unwanted frequencies and amplify desired ones. Now, how does this relate to anti-gravity? Grebenikov's theory suggests that the cavity structures in certain insect wings can resonate in a way that produces an anti-gravity effect. This is where things get a bit speculative and controversial. Theoretical physics does allow for the existence of anti-gravity under certain conditions, such as in the presence of negative energy densities or exotic matter. However, these conditions are extremely difficult to achieve and have not been observed in nature or in a laboratory. Furthermore, the idea that a physical structure like the cavities in an insect's wings could generate enough resonance to counteract the force of gravity is a significant leap. This would require a level of energy amplification far beyond what is currently understood or demonstrated by cavity resonance. So, while cavity resonance is a well-established scientific principle and its applications are widespread, the leap to anti-gravity is a big one. The scientific community, however, questions whether cavity resonance can indeed produce anti-gravity effects. Grebenikov's anti-gravity claims have been met with significant criticism. The world of science is built on the pillars of reproducibility and peer review, two areas where Grebenikov's work falls short. Without the ability to reproduce his results and lacking detailed, peer-reviewed publications, his anti-gravity machine remains a mystery, shrouded in the fog of unverified claims. The scientific method demands rigorous testing and validation. It's this process that separates scientific fact from fiction, 
and it's a process that Grebenikov's anti-gravity machine has yet to undergo. His claims of levitation through cavity resonance, while fascinating, have not been independently verified. This lack of reproducibility raises red flags in the scientific community, casting a shadow of doubt over his work. Moreover, Grebenikov's work is largely absent from the annals of peer-reviewed publications. Without this stamp of approval from the scientific community, his work remains on the fringes of scientific discourse. Peer review provides a crucial checkpoint, a filter that ensures only rigorous, verifiable science makes it into the public sphere. By bypassing this step, Grebenikov's claims remain untested and unverified. Beyond these methodological concerns, Grebenikov's claims also challenge the very fabric of our understanding of the physical world. His concept of anti-gravity requires a significant overhaul of our current understanding of gravity and electromagnetism. Without a new theoretical framework to support these claims, they remain at odds with mainstream physics. The scientific community, therefore, remains skeptical. The lack of empirical evidence, theoretical backing and transparency in Grebenikov's experiments has led to his work being categorized as pseudoscience. Yet it's important to note that while the specific claims made by Grebenikov are not supported, the phenomenon of cavity resonance does hold intrigue and potential for future exploration. Despite the controversy, Grebenikov's work has sparked intriguing discussions about anti-gravity and the boundaries of science. His unconventional approach and bold claims serve as a reminder that the world of science is ever-evolving and that the unexplored fringes of today could become the scientific breakthroughs of tomorrow. If proven feasible, anti-gravity technology could revolutionize our world. Imagine a world where cars levitate, where spacecrafts no longer need rocket fuel, where your morning commute is as simple as floating to your destination. That's the promise of anti-gravity technology. But it's not just about transportation. Anti-gravity technology could transform construction, enabling us to lift and move heavy materials effortlessly. It could change healthcare, allowing for new methods of physical therapy and rehabilitation where gravity no longer limits movement. In the realm of entertainment, can you envision zero-gravity sports or concerts? The potential applications are as vast as our creativity allows. However, such a disruptive technology comes with its own set of ethical, societal, and environmental implications. Can light power a physical object or mechanical device, such as motor or engine? Well, it's not just a figment of science fiction. The answer lies in the research area of levitational optomechanics, resonant cavities, and the Q-factor engineering. Imagine harnessing the power of light to levitate and manipulate tiny particles, to create resonant cavities that amplify this interaction, and to design motors and engines that are powered by nothing but light. This may sound like a far-off dream, but it's a reality that researchers are actively exploring and developing. The science may be complex, but the potential applications are mind-boggling, from space exploration to precision instrumentation. To understand how light can power motors and engines, we must first understand levitational optomechanics. Levitational optomechanics. Now that's quite a mouthful, isn't it? But don't worry, we're going to break it down. Let's start with the basics, optomechanics. This is all about the interaction between light and mechanical vibrations. You see, light isn't just something that illuminates our world. It has momentum, it can exert pressure, and yes, it can cause things to vibrate. Now, onto the levitation part. Levitation techniques, whether they're optical, magnetic, or acoustic, are all about lifting things off the ground. In the context of optomechanics, we're using light to levitate tiny particles. It's a bit like magic, but with a solid foundation in physics. So when we combine the principles of optomechanics with levitation, we get levitational optomechanics. But why is it important? Well, it allows us to achieve ultra-sensitive measurements and control over matter. Imagine being able to manipulate tiny particles with precision, all with the power of light. We're talking about harnessing the very essence of Einstein's e C2 where energy and mass are intertwined. But it's not just about control. By levitating particles, we eliminate contact with any surfaces. This means we can reduce the influence of external vibrations and thermal fluctuations, allowing for more precise measurements. 
It's a bit like conducting an orchestra in the quietest room in the world, where the only sounds you hear are the ones you want to hear. And this is where things get really interesting. With levitational optomechanics, we can create systems that are incredibly sensitive to changes in force, temperature, and even magnetic fields. These systems could be used in a variety of fields, from quantum computing to gravitational wave detection. Levitational optomechanics is the stepping stone to harnessing light as a power source. And with it, we're not just illuminating the path forward, we're paving the way for a future where light powers our world. Now that we've brushed up on levitational optomechanics, it's time to get to know the resonant cavities. Picture a room where sound reverberates, amplifying the notes of a beautiful symphony. This is, in essence, what resonant cavities do for light. They're like echo chambers for light waves, enhancing the interaction between light and mechanical systems. Resonant cavities come in different shapes and sizes, each with its unique characteristics. Some are as simple as two mirrors facing each other, while others are complex structures etched on silicon chips. Regardless of their form, they all serve the same purpose, to trap light and make it dance to the tune of mechanical vibrations. The design and fabrication of these cavities aren't a walk in the park, though. It's a careful balancing act that considers a range of factors, from the material's optical and mechanical properties to the desired frequency of resonance. But when done right, these cavities can resonate with light in a way that's nothing short of magical. Inside these cavities, light doesn't just sit idle. It oscillates, creating different modes, much like how a guitar string vibrates at different frequencies to produce various notes. These modes are not just fascinating to study, but they are crucial in optomechanics. They determine how light and mechanical systems interact influencing everything from the sensitivity of measurements to the efficiency of light-powered engines. But creating these modes isn't as simple as strumming a guitar. It requires precise control over the cavity's shape and size, the light's wavelength, and even the temperature. It's a complex dance where the slightest misstep can lead to a cacophony instead of a symphony. So why go through all this trouble? Well, these cavities play a crucial role in levitational optomechanics. They allow us to harness the power of light to control and measure mechanical systems with unprecedented precision. They are the heart of light-powered motors and engines, pumping light in a rhythm that moves mechanical systems. These cavities play a crucial part in making light-powered systems a reality. So the next time you marvel at the power of light, remember the resonant cavities that make it all possible. It's time to delve into the Q factor a key player in the performance of resonant systems. Let's embark on this journey of exploration together. The Q factor, or quality factor, is a dimensionless parameter that quantifies the energy loss within a resonant system. Think of it as a measure of purity. In the world of optomechanics, it's a critical quantity that affects the performance of our systems. It's like the sharpness of a musical note played on a violin. The sharper the note, the greater the Q factor and the more energy the system can store. A high Q factor indicates a low rate of energy loss relative to the stored energy. This is crucial in optomechanical systems where we aim to maximize the interaction between light and mechanical vibrations. So, how do we measure this elusive Q factor? We leverage the natural oscillations of the system. By observing how quickly these oscillations die down, we can calculate the Q factor. A system that oscillates for a long time before losing its energy has a high Q factor. But we're not just interested in measuring the Q factor, we want to enhance it. By carefully selecting materials and optimizing the design of our resonant cavities, we can increase the Q factor, enabling our systems to store more energy and interact with light more efficiently. This brings us to the role of the Q factor in optomechanical sensing and actuation. A high Q factor allows for ultra-sensitive measurements and precise control over matter. It's like having a super-sensitive ear that can hear the faintest whispers of the universe. In light-powered motors and engines, the Q factor can significantly impact the efficiency and precision of these systems. It can determine how effectively light can be converted into mechanical motion, paving the way for the development of highly efficient light-powered propulsion systems. With a better understanding of the Q factor, 
we're now closer to realizing light-powered motors and engines. So, join us as we continue to explore the fascinating world of levitational optomechanics. Now let's explore how we can leverage these concepts to develop light-powered motors and engines. In the grand tapestry of human innovation, the idea of harnessing light to generate motion is both fascinating and revolutionary. These machines, known as light-powered motors and engines, are no longer just science fiction. They're becoming reality thanks to the principles of levitational optomechanics and resonant cavities. Light-powered propulsion is a fascinating concept. It's based on the principle that light, despite having no mass, carries momentum. And when this light is absorbed or reflected by an object, it can transfer that momentum, causing the object to move. Ingenious, isn't it? Now, designing a motor or engine powered by light is no small feat. It requires a deep understanding of optomechanics and the principles of levitation. These motors leverage the power of light to generate force and motion. They rely on the interaction between light and mechanical vibrations, a concept we've come to know as optomechanics. The design of these motors is meticulously tailored to optimize the interaction between light and the mechanical system. Resonant cavities play a crucial role here, enhancing this light-mechanical interaction. The Q factor, a measure of the energy loss in these resonant systems, also comes into play, influencing the performance and efficiency of these motors. So what does the future hold for these light-powered motors and engines? The possibilities are as limitless as the universe itself. From space exploration where the absence of friction makes light a viable propulsion source to micro-robotics, where the precision control of light can enable intricate movements. Precision instrumentation is another field that stands to gain, with light-powered motors offering a level of sensitivity unmatched by conventional systems. The fascinating world of light-powered motors and engines is still in its infancy, but the progress we've made so far is promising. The marriage of light and mechanics is opening up a whole new realm of possibilities. The future of light-powered motors and engines looks bright, doesn't it? Before we wrap up, let's touch upon some advanced topics and applications. Levitational optomechanics doesn't exist in a vacuum, except when it does. It's a field that beautifully intertwines with quantum optomechanics, opening up exciting avenues for quantum sensing and information processing. The marriage of these two fields allows us to leverage the sensitivity of optomechanical systems to detect minute quantum effects and vice versa. Picture it as a scientific waltz, where each step forward in one field propels the other into new territories. Now, let's not forget about the elephant in the room, or rather, the vacuum. The performance of levitational optomechanical systems can be significantly influenced by the surrounding environment, particularly in terms of vacuum requirements and thermal noise management. Achieving a high vacuum is crucial to minimizing air damping and maximizing the Q factor, while managing thermal noise is key to maintaining the stability and sensitivity of these systems. It's a bit like trying to hear a whisper in a storm. You've got to turn down the noise and focus on the signal. What does this all mean in the real world, you might ask? Well, levitational optomechanics has already begun to make its mark in various fields. From precision measurements in fundamental physics to gravitational wave detection, and from non-contact manipulation of tiny particles to the development of light-powered motors for micro-robotics and space exploration, these are just a few examples of how this fascinating field is revolutionizing our understanding of the world and the technology we use to explore it. As we can see, the field of levitational optomechanics continues to expand and evolve. The integration of quantum optomechanics and the careful consideration of environmental factors are just a couple of the advanced topics pushing the boundaries of what we can achieve. And, with each new development, we're not just learning more about the universe, we're also finding new ways to interact with it, manipulate it, and harness its vast potential. As we reach the end of this enlightening journey, let's ponder the challenges and future directions of this field. The realm of levitational optomechanics and light-powered motors, like any burgeoning scientific domain, has its share of hurdles to overcome. These challenges range from technical intricacies, such as enhancing the quality factor and managing thermal noise, 
to broader issues like the need for more efficient material science solutions and improved design methodologies. Presently, one of the significant limitations is the difficulty in maintaining stable levitation and achieving precise control over optomechanical systems, especially in environments with external disturbances. Furthermore, creating resonant cavities that can sustain high Q factors for longer durations is another task that keeps researchers on their toes. However, these challenges, rather than being deterrents, serve as catalysts for innovation. They invite researchers to explore new frontiers and, in doing so, contribute to the evolution of the field. As we look ahead, the future of levitational optomechanics is laden with exciting opportunities. Advances in material science could give rise to novel materials with superior optical and mechanical properties, significantly enhancing the performance of light-powered motors. In the realm of quantum mechanics, the integration of levitational optomechanics with quantum systems could open up new avenues for quantum sensing and information processing. Furthermore, the development of advanced optical technologies could lead to more efficient light sources and detectors, further boosting the capabilities of optomechanical systems. These future directions not only promise a wealth of scientific knowledge, but also have the potential to revolutionize various fields, from space exploration and micro-robotics to precision instrumentation and beyond. As we stand on the cusp of these exciting possibilities, it's worth remembering that the journey is as important as the destination. Each challenge we face, every limitation we overcome, brings us one step closer to fully harnessing the power of light. The future of levitational optomechanics and light-powered motors is not just about the destination. It's about the journey, the discovery, and the potential to change the world as we know it. The possibilities are endless when we begin to harness the power of light. The future awaits us.